Hey everyone, Benny here. We are back. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow, what a time for my throat to decide to screw up. But anyways, we're back. As you remember, in the last video, we set up the RAM. And there will be more forms of memory in our computer than just the RAM. So, continuing our quest to add memory to our computer, we will continue on to our next step, which is the register. So what is a register and why do we need it? Well, in our case, a register, the only two registers we're going to need right now is the VLU. One for input A and one for input B. Basically they're gonna work just like two of these, one of two groups of four bits. One is going to hold the first number that our ALU is processing, the other one's gonna hold the second number our ALU is processing. Remember we can add or subtract two different numbers right now and they need, need two numbers to operate, so that's why we have two numbers. And, that's, and conveniently, we have these, all of these nice repeaters already set up for us. And we also have these lines, but don't worry about those. Those are a result of some subterranean wiring I've already done off camera because I didn't think you'd want to watch me do it. So I will show you that and how it's done in a moment. But first off, we want to load the D flip flop. And unfortunately, you do have to sort of guesstimate the position of this. Oh, yeah, it does need to be rotated 90. And paste. And wow, that was spot on first try. So move over. They don't want. Now, you don't want these to be perfectly touching like the last ones. So these you don't want to be overlapping. But, anyways, there should be a total of. I believe, um, hang on, a total of eight of these. So, now, if I, okay. So the way this is, oh, whoops. Excuse me. All right, that should be everything plugged in. Okay, now, so all the outputs of our D flip-flops are plugged into the inputs to the ALU. Now, the reason we're doing this is a little bit odd. Basically, every other one is going to correspond to to the input, which might sound weird at first, but let me explain. So this is the first digit of input A, this is the second digit of input A, third digit of input A, fourth digit of input A. This is the first digit of input B, second digit of input B, third, fourth. And that's the way this is going to work. Now we're going to be using the writing command in order to control which one it gets sent to. So we don't have to worry about information scrambling if we plug the, the same thing into both of these, which is very good. So, But I am going to put repeaters on here because if one of these is on and we write, that can cause issues like the other one's on. And that will happen, so that will cause issues. So I'm going to go ahead and hook these up. So, and now, the next thing, you, since you don't really have these wires yet, at, or at least not powered, but I should go ahead and show you the subterranean wiring. So first off, the S, these registers, or these inputs, for the time being, will be getting their information from the output of the ALU. The reason we're doing this is we can completely bypass the RAM system because, let's be honest, for the most part, if you get an output from the ALU, you're probably want, going to either want to send it to RAM or straight back into the ALU. So we're going to give it both of those options, and we're going to allow it to bypass the RAM if we really want to. So first off, take out this, and you're already starting to see some of my subterranean wiring. And put a torch is like this. One, two, three, four. And that's basically everything that does not involve the subterranean wiring. So what this is going to do is going to invert. It's going to send it onto a bus below. So it's basically doing this. Same thing we did for these two bus transfers, except without the memory in between. And it goes under. And I know I we said we weren't going to add repeaters yet, but these this is the final way these are going to work, so I decided to go ahead and add repeaters. And you can too. So, in fact, to make this better, you could put these a little bit earlier on along it, but that's a bit of beside the point at this point, so I'm not going to worry about it. But all they're doing is just traveling straight along. And then they're going up these wires to the torches, which, if I did them correctly, should be right at behind the wires that go into the ALU. And I did space them correctly, so that's exactly where they come out. 
that's basically the ALU registers. Now, I know there's probably a few people out there wondering, why on earth do we need these? I, I mean, I know it's great to be able to remember the values for that we're sending into the ALU, but why is that really necessary? Really, it's just to make it the computer run faster. And it might not be completely obvious how this is going to make it run faster at first, but th I'll explain. If we can remember the values we're sending into the ALU independently from RAM, that means we you will have to be able to cut down completely on a whole bunch of reading commands from RAM, and it also means we won't have to pass it straight, straight through a RAM block every single time we want to send it back. We can have that block right here, and we won't necessarily need to update that every single time we're passing it back through. And that might not make sense as to why that is right now. In fact, that might not make sense completely at all if you're newer to this series. But you'll you will see it in practice. It's again, memory is one of those things where it makes a whole bunch more sense in practice. And the other big advantage of this is if we have the value memorized, and we'll be constantly sending it through because we don't really have anything preventing it from reading it. And what that means is we'll always have the calculated value for every single operation we add to the ALU. So which means this makes our muxers even more efficient because every time we get the mu use our muxers, which in case you don't remember are these wires, because every time we use those to get a value out of our ALU, basically the ALU is already processed it for us and we don't have to worry about having to reprocess it for a different operation. All the operations are already processed for it. That's a really, 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 really good advantage to have when you're building an ALU. So, if you manage to time the cycling right, you can literally cut down the processing time of the ALU to zero, have the entire delay of the computer, just memory and serial busing. And you will witness that hopefully, in this computer. Oh yeah, and the only other thing I can think to say is, as far as interpreting which one is written to, again, we're having going to develop a mechanism for reading and writing to different types of memory a little bit later. So, um, yeah. Thank you, I will see you in the next video.